Hi, Horizon Sons. We are back with SMART, and today you have just learned a little bit about Bruce Langdon, who's an illustrator for books, which means he does some of the drawings in the books that you read. And so your teachers have some books, and hopefully you'll have a chance to see some of the pictures um, of on the internet here of H is for Hoosier and um, B is for Buckeye that he illustrated the book covers. And here's just a quick example of something I've done, which is the, what the project we're gonna do today. We're, we're gonna let you guys play with watercolor. Watercolor is a type of medium that book illustrators do. So if you ever wanted to be a drawer of pictures for books, watercolor is a really uh, simple way um, to put color in with very specific lines and sketching. So we're gonna go over that today. This is kind of an example. I'll go into that more in a second. So the first thing, um, we're going to talk about that we're going to give you guys as a tool is your pencils. We're going to have you start off with your pencils because today we're going to draw a little bit. So it is very helpful when you start to draw that you have a picture. Um, the teachers will have pictures of birds for you. We're going to have those on our, our smart website up on the wall so that you guys can see. But it would be good to have a picture in your mind or maybe up on the wall of a bird. It can be any birds. How many birds are there? There's owls, there's turkeys, there's a toucan which has a really long beak and then there's a flamingo that likes to stand on one leg and there's an ostrich who's really big and there's the mallard duck with the green head and there's so many different varieties of birds and birds is something that's illustrated and fun. A cardinal is the Indiana state bird. We all recognize cardinals this time of year. So we're going to focus on birds. This is life science and so the first thing I'm going to do is just walk you guys through a little bit how to get started. So think about the bird that you want to start with and the first thing that we're going to do is kind of sketch a bird, okay? And for instance, in this case, I'm going to do a toucan, okay? A toucan um, is a bird that has a really long beak um, and blue, kind of like if you have ever watched the movie Rio, there was a toucan on there, a toucan family. What I'm going to do is say T is for toucan is my phrase on what I'm drawing. I'm just going to show you this is just a stencil you guys can use a stencil or you can hand draw the letter T it won't matter but you can use a stencil and then you say T is for toucan and there was a cereal commercial that had a toucan on it too I remember that as a kid so his name was Sam you know follow your nose it always knows and so today I'm going to kind of start drawing the bird and very simply, if you guys are trying to be like, hmm, how do you draw a bird? Well, it's back to your lines and shapes. Remember we've learned lines and shapes? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna kinda of think about the shape of a bird. So for a toucan, one of the things I know is it has a really long beak. So I'm gonna go ahead and kinda of draw, you know, kind of a long, you know, beak like that. It's just an oval shape. And then, and then they have kind of a head, which is kinda of circular, like so, okay? And then, um, then they have kind of a longer body and maybe some feathers, right? Some wings, some feathers. So you wanna draw some shapes with some feathers, just like this. And then usually they have kind of a pretty big, you know, breast, kind of a pretty big front, okay? So you can see my pencil sketchings are kind of messy and that's totally okay, because this is art practice. This is always fun. There's no reason to worry because you'll get lots of time for art. And then I'm gonna add in my lines. I'm gonna put a few stripes in my beak and make it interesting and fun, kind of clarify that here with the pencil. You can always erase um, and just kind of make that beak a little bit, kind of make an eye, send it kind of part of his face, maybe make some stripes in, in there, maybe add a, another layer of, of um, you know, uh, wings there. And what am I missing? What is he missing? You know, he's, maybe he's missing a little bit longer tail, maybe a tail feather to fly. Maybe he's, he's missing another layer in here. Okay, so you're just making lines that are curved for that. And then the other thing he's missing is feet. You know, he's got to stand on something. Maybe he's flying, maybe he's standing. I'm just gonna put two legs down here. I even like them different lengths. They don't have to be perfectly the same length. See, one's shorter than the other. Maybe he's kind of standing that way. So that's a very simple drawing of a toucan. So that's what you guys wanna start with today. Now I wanna show you something to try to watch. These are two different drawings of toucans. This toucan here has very detailed feathers, really tight. So it was a drawing where I was trying to show really tight little feathers. 
that's gonna be a lot harder to do with watercolor, okay? So watercolor does better when you just keep your line and your shape simple. So if you get into really detailed work in the face and in the head and everything, and you wanna do something really detailed, um, and you get really specific with your lines, really small shapes, that's gonna be really hard. So it's easier to kind of stay with something that's a little bit more uh, bigger and, and shapes so that you can you know, try to see it on your paper. But you guys get to learn that. So, so I don't want you to be afraid to try something, but I think you're gonna find that if you go too detailed like this with your pencil and you spend the time on your pencil drawings, and you don't have fun with the watercolor and just a few pencil drawings, you, you may not have as much time and you may find that the, the watercolor is gonna blend in here and it's gonna soak in all there and you may not see that detail as well as if you kinda do something here. I'll show you with the watercolor here in a minute. So here's the T is for Toucan. And um, I'll, I'll just show you real quick how the watercolor works. So what I like to do is I like to start off with something simple, like just down at the, you know, just kind of swash it. So all I've done is I've taken my brush and here's the watercolor tray. You guys walk in a watercolor tray, put a little bit of water in there, not a lot of water, a little bit of water, and just kind of go in there and kind of wet your brush. You don't have to have a lot, a little bit goes a long way and just kind of, you know, pour it on there. And don't worry too much. You can see I'm not trying to be perfect. You can see I'm not painting like I was holding a brush. I just kind of spread it around and and then I'm gonna wash off my brush real quick and I'm gonna get blue I really like the color blue for a toucan and then I'm gonna kind of just shade in my tea you can see I'm not too worried about trying to be perfect on that tea and trying to make sure the watercolor stays in the lines when you guys read books and look at the pictures you'll see it comes out of the lines don't 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 be worried about your lines you don't have to keep the color in the lines you can have fun with it you will be able to see your pencil through the drawing so what I'm gonna do here is just add a bit of water and kind of, you know, add a little bit of sky in here, you know, for my tea is for Toucan. And then I'll go back over it a little bit more with some darker color so you can kind of see. And then just kind of spread it around and let the watercolor just kind of spread around. The most important thing is you guys have fun and experiment with this. You know, that's the most important thing. And then for the bird, um, what we're gonna do is is just kind of like go into it with some color. So I usually like to start light and then get darker. So you notice the first thing I'm not doing is the black yet. I'm not doing the black. I'm kind of starting with a little bit of an orange head, kind of filling him in, you know, with an orange head. And then I love to do yellow, you know, before that too. So put a little yellow in here and even let the, the two colors kind of blend, you know, kind of make him a little bit rainbow. And then I'm gonna put blue right there in between and then what happens when I go get my yellow again and I go back kind of into this blue, do you see what kind of happens? It, it changes color a little bit on the paper and I think that looks cool. So you can see the yellow and the blue kind of work together and there's a little bit of green in there. So, you know, that's, I, I kind of think that's neat. I'm gonna do a little bit of black. Whenever I use black, I'm very, very little with it. And so I'll put a little black on his nose here. Um, black is a very harsh color, but I'm still not gonna worry about getting too far out of the lines with it. And then kind of go in there, maybe with another color. Maybe I'll put a little purple on his beak. Your drawing can be anything that you want. Maybe he has a little bit more blue in there. Beaks aren't usually different colors, so I'm, I'm just kind of going for fun off in my brain, in my, in my own creative brain here, and just kind of mixing that in. And then that's it. And it's gonna bleed in there, but that's okay. And then there he is, there's his big, beautiful beak. So that's kind of fun. And then you can see it's starting to dry and I have kind of a neat sketch. And then before you're done with this, you're gonna put in some greenery. So you're gonna do some, some background surroundings with your bird. So in this case, you know, I think of Rio and, and foliage and lots of leaves. So I'm gonna kind of do some leaf shapes that are big, you know, kind of like this with some, you know, drawings in them like that, something simple, maybe layer it on here, you know, something simple. And then I'll take, take my watercolor back to it and kind of go through it with green. And again, kind of don't, don't, be, don't be too scared about it. Um, make sure you've got water in your paint and just kind of spread it around. Let the water do its thing with the color. And the, the best thing about watercolor is it's never gonna be the same when you do it again. You can't do it over. You can't, 
it's, watercolor is one of those mediums. You just got to kind of go with it and let the water go and, and kind of see what it does, explore. It's almost like science. It's magic. So that's an example of what we're up to today and how to get started.